I wish that they would let me pull a Kim Kardashian and try it on. Okay, I'm just kidding. Hello, and welcome back to another vintage inspired video. I'm sure you can tell by the surroundings that today's video is a little bit different than previous ones. And that is because today we're going to be exploring some Hollywood history. I'm standing in Beverly Hills, California, right around the corner from the auction house Julian's and that is what we are here for. Right now on display they have some amazing pieces of old Hollywood history ahead of an auction that is taking place next week. So I don't know where the items are going to go after next week but right now we can see them and I know what I'm there to see. I'm very excited to see it and to take you with me. So let's go see it. We found it and honestly it is so worth the drive. I don't think I've ever seen an Audrey Hepburn film used costume before in person. I have been to museums in Europe before and saw some of her personal items. This one is really neat because it's not only Audrey Hepburn, it is also Givenchy. We don't know where it is going to end up after next week so I am relishing in this moment of being able to see it in person. Here's some information about it. Look at the little fans. It looks like it's missing some, which would be very on par with vintage. I have a number of vintage items myself that are missing beads, labels, belts. love all the detail work and I'm not sure but I'd wager to guess that the little rhinestones you see on it were once over each of these fans. It looks like that because you can see little tiny holes above each fan which would indicate to me that it once was completely covered with all of that and if you've seen the film you know just how sparkly she was. Except the place is in such a mess I couldn't bear to face it alone. Oh you have a message? No. Audrey Hepburn is seen wearing the Givenchy pink silk satin organza couture dress in the 1961 film Breakfast at Tiffany's towards the end of the film during an emotional scene. The dress is made up of many tassel-like fan appliques and rhinestones that give it such a beautiful sparkle in the film. Givenchy first designed the dress for his fall 1960 collection and black. One of his well-known clients, Lee Radziwell, was photographed in the dress in 1961 while leaving the Hotel Carlisle in New York with her sister Jacqueline Kennedy by her side. After seeing it, Audrey asked Givenchy to make one in pink with a scoop neckline and that's the one she wore in the film. Givenchy dressed Audrey Hepburn for eight films with Breakfast at Tiffany's being their fourth time working together and it produced one of the most well-known openings of any film in history and one of the most iconic little black dresses. I love the what I guess we'd call flaws. I think it gives it character. I mean, it's a 62 year old dress, so some of the appliques are missing along with the rhinestones and there are some loose threads, but that is to be expected with almost any vintage dress. This is a dress that belonged to another old Hollywood icon. This was Janet Leigh's dress that she wore to the 1960 Academy Awards and it was designed by Edith Head. This dress, very fittingly, belonged to Janet Leigh's daughter, Jamie Lee Curtis, and she wore this one to the 1983 Academy Awards. Look at how it sparkles. Oh my gosh, I love it. This dress right here belonged to Miss Betty Davis and she wore it in the film Where Love Has Gone in 1964. These dresses belong to Greta Garbo from the film Camille, Vivian Lee from the film That Hamilton Woman, and Judy Garland from The Pirate, which is one that has been on my list to see. 
This is a sketch of a costume for Doris Day in the film The Man Who Knew Too Much. The costume was designed by Edith Head and the sketch is attributed to Grace Sprague. These gloves are from a film I'm embarrassed to say I haven't seen, but I gotta be honest, it's not at the top of my list. These are Clark Gable's gloves from the film Gone with the Wind. This is what's called a super scope. It looks like a projection lens that was gifted to Walt Disney in 1954. This dress belonged to Joan Crawford. It was worn in the film Harriet Craig from 1950, and I apologize for the backlight situation. Here we have a Greta Garbo signed photograph. And then right below here is Katherine Hepburn's passport. This is from the 1960s. These are kind of hard to see. These are some very famous photographs of Marilyn Monroe. This one we have all seen. I'll stand here. We have all seen the photo from the seven year itch. This was an alternate view that was taken. And this one over here is an original print by photographer Andre de Dinas. And I actually have a book that's a collection of his photographs of Marilyn that I highly recommend. This right here is a French Academy Best Actor Crystal Star Award that was intended for James Dean for his performance in Rebel Without a Cause. But unfortunately, since he died in 1955 before the film was even released, he was awarded this posthumously. Here is one of the items we were specifically here to see. These are Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall's wedding rings. They got married in 1945 and famously met on the set of the film To Have and Have Not, which was their first film together. And then there are a few other items. This one is hard to see, but it is a locket gifted to Bacall from Bogart. It says, baby, here's my heart, bogey. This is his personal house key, and it has a 14 karat gold wrap because why the heck not for Humphrey Bogart. And there are his initials, and I'll put in a photo of what the back looks like here. Here is one of the top items we were here to see. This is a charm bracelet gifted to Bacall by Bogart. It has a whistle on it, which is a very cheeky and cute reference to her very famous line in the film To Have and Have Not, which was directed toward Bogart's character. It goes something like, you know how to whistle, don't you, Steve? You just put your lips together and blow. And there is no way I did that any justice. So if you haven't seen the film, go see it done right. It is a wonderful film and you'll see that line and get what I am talking about. And back here it says Betty Bacall, which was her real name. Then we come over here. This was a lighter that was gifted to Lauren Bacall from the crew of The African Queen, which was a film set she was on because her husband starred in it alongside Katherine Hepburn. Here is a beautiful lighter with this inset clock that was a gift to Bogart either from Tony Curtis or Anthony Quinn. Right here is a sailing watch that belonged to Bogart. And then down below are sailboat racing trophies that were also Bogart's. And then one more look at that locket. It's just so beautiful. I wonder what photos were on the inside of it originally. And you know, if you guys all want to go in on it, we could buy it for $20,000. But actually, if we're going to go in on anything, it's going to be the Audrey Hepburn Breakfast at Tiffany's dress. And then let's have one more look at the key. And one more look at this whistle. I think this is one of my favorite items in the entire auction. And is currently at $100,000 in the bidding. And one more look at their wedding bands. These are sitting currently at $20,000. And all of these items right here belong to Elizabeth Taylor. This was a special effects flying saucer miniature that was created for the film The Day the Earth Stood Still in 1951. 
I had to include this one for my fellow Back to the Future fans. So this tie was worn by Michael J. Fox and Back to the Future 2 when they were in 2015 because obviously we were going to be wearing neckties that look like that. And then this is Biff's Hoverboard from the Future. These three dresses right here belong to a woman who needs no introduction, Princess Diana. I'm gonna throw this one in for my fellow elf fans. This may not immediately look familiar and that is because this was not actually screen worn by Will Ferrell in the film. This was an alternate costume that was created when legal concerns came up that they may not be able to release the film due to Buddy's costume looking too much like the head elf's costume and the claymation Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. Scenes were filmed with this, but the final film is the green costume we all know today. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this little look at some amazing pieces of old Hollywood history standing here inside of Julian's in Beverly Hills, California. <sighs> Was there anything that you wish you could buy or that maybe you're gonna bid on? I know what my answer is. It is obviously the breakfast at Tiffany's Audrey Hepburn dress. And unfortunately it won't be going home with me, but we'll see what ends up happening with it at the auction next week or by the time this video comes out, probably would have already passed. But I will see you on the next video. And until then, wishing you a super swell day. Bye. Slightly overwhelmed, slightly overwhelmed.